when I first got breast implants um, and started noticing, like one of the first things I noticed was muscles, uh, sort, like a really intense muscle soreness that was not going away in the same and interval. How long, how long after the breast implants? Yeah. So it was about nine months after I got silicone breast implant that I started having really full body, like obvious, scary symptoms. Um, and if I had symptoms prior to that, I'm not really sure because my lifestyle was not very healthy. I, you know, I, I, I was burning the candle at both ends with work and I was also drinking a couple nights a week and not paying attention to what I was eating, you know, the way it is now, of course. So so um, there might have been insidious symptoms that snuck up, but then just the catastrophic like collapse happened after about nine months of yeah. having them in my Okay. So. Yeah. And, and that's uh, part of what I was going to ask, kind of this progression, you know, kind of tell the story how it progressed, because obviously, like most, you didn't think it was the breast implants. Am I right? No, I had no idea. In fact, um, part of the reason why once I, <laughs> so anyone with, that has experienced this or has dealt with an, a similar disease um, knows that you kind of, if you do a survey of your lifestyle from five years from when it kind of started before and then later, it, your life just changes. So, I mean, it becomes so much smaller, like as your bedtime is earlier and you're sleeping longer and you can't do things that you used to do. So in a way that there's, there's benefit to that, which is that everything slows down. Um, at least in my case, things were very fast and then they became very slow. So it made it very clear to me that I needed to start assessing my life and what I really wanted and what I wanted long-term for myself. And, um, and, and it was during that time that I decided I wanted to pursue a career in health. And I had always been very interested in medicine. Um, in fact, when I was an art major in undergrad, I did all of my like senior art installation projects about health topics and about plastic surgery and medicine. And just it was just so funny. Um, when I asked those professors for letters of recommendation for chiropractic school, they were like, we are not surprised at all that you ended up doing this. But in any event, um, I, I chose chiropractic because I thought I had a musculoskeletal problem because my whole body was aching. Right. And I and I went to my, my allopathic doctors and I, and I was told that I was normal. You know, they did my labs and they said that I was normal and there was nothing wrong with, with, with me um, in that regard. And, and in the time, I, I was thinking about those as different things. Like the musculoskeletal system is different than the internal medicine system, which is actually not true, as we know. Right. But at the time, I was naive. And so I went to chiropractic school pursuing a solution and a cure to why I was in so much pain and why my muscles were hurting so much. So Right. Yeah, so I mean, hurting muscles, um, you know, one thing, but then obviously it led to typical was, neurotoxic illness, right? I mean, I'm yeah. the sleep problems, the massive fatigue, the other issues. Kind of let's let's pull some of those symptoms in because if I'm a, a woman watching this, you know, I want to know is this me? Right. So that's another thing that happens. There, there are so many symptoms that can manifest that could be unique to that person because what we're doing when when you put something in the body that's in the body 24 hours a day seven days a week that is toxic it's clouding your epigenetic environment so whatever predispositions you have those genes have that opportunity to express themselves right. the negative gene to turn on disease processes which might be different from one person to another now with that being said, there are commonalities across breast implant illness women. And, and in my case, I call myself um, an SOD2 category patient because this is this, and I've seen this because I've worked with so many women and I've looked at all, many of their genetic reports. A lot of these women have gone the extra mile to get genetic tests done because they've been on this search for so many years to find out what's wrong with them um, without help from from their healthcare provider. Um, so in the SOD2, which is the mitochondrial presentation patient, um, you're not having an autoimmune disease turn on. So you might not have the typical autoimmune symptoms, which would be like joint pain, um, different uh, antibodies showing up in your labs, um, swelling, like this intense swelling. But you might have really bad muscle fatigue. So you'll have all the mitochondrial based symptoms, which I'm sure you could elaborate on as well, um, because that's where the heavy metals are affecting, right? Yeah. Um, so for, in my case, it was, it was full body pain. It was um, that would come from 
from a variable stressor. So it could have been because I worked out too hard. It could have been because I walked to the store. It could have been because I was stressed out. It could have been because I got in a fight with somebody. It could have been emotional. Mm -hmm. um, I would ache everywhere. So kind of like a fibromyalgia concept. Um, I was having neurological symptoms before I changed my lifestyle. So when I was still doing the things I was used to doing that never caused neurological symptoms, like not sleeping enough, drinking alcohol at all, um, I would get very, very bad neurological symptoms, which I was able to get kind of under wraps when I got really healthy, um, you know, but like a swimming upstream type of healthy. Right. Um, <laughs> um, I had, I had on and off, like, like, puffiness in my ankles, um, my face got puffy, um, a lot of fatigue, a lot of need for like, like a tremendous amount of rest, um, you know, foggy thinking, heavy, heavy head, um, weird reactions to things, uh, like sensitivities to things that I hadn't previously been sensitive to. My GI became very problematic. Um, it made me susceptible to like, getting a gut infection that wouldn't go away. Yeah, I mean, so like every symptom that you've described, that, that was me too, right? Meaning those are very I mean, common neurotoxic yeah. symptoms. And, you know, so I mean, were there any that were, you mentioned maybe there was a few that are really kind of specific. Yeah. Um, if a woman told you that had breast implants, you know, here's my symptoms, you know, it's like, okay, she could have amalgam illness, she could have a lot, but those symptoms, what are, are they? Well, Again, I'd like to bring it back to the mitochondrial model patient because it's something that not a lot of people are talking about and they've been talking about autoimmunity since the 90s because that's something that's in the FDA fact sheet for silicone that anti-nuclear antibodies are associated in one in 300 women within three years, um, which the critics will attribute to lifestyle changes after getting breast implants, which I think is ridiculous. Oh my like, gosh. Really? But uh, say that statistic one more time though. I want people to hear that. So each, every single pharmaceutical device that exists has an FDA fact sheet, which is public access. So you can find it online. Um, you can find it on the FDA website. Um, in my, my particular type of implant, which is the, men, it was the, I'm not going to say the name of the company because I'm trying not to, <laughs> make it a couple angry. lawsuits perhaps <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> um so you know in, in the silicone implants that i had uh the fact sheet you know it has complications listed so that could be like bruising um swelling infection these are things that happen when you have surgery and then they just happen to throw in that list anti-nuclear antibodies which as we know is a is a marker for connected tissue illness yeah, and, and then they say auto when, when autoimmune connective tissue could be lupus. it could be another type of joint connective tissue usually um something like lupus um in one in 300 women within three years because that's what the research has done now it's also important to point out that in the studies done they excluded people who had autoimmunity Pre, pre who are had pre-existing yeah, autoimmunity. Those are the people who would be most likely. Or so answer no. questions with family history of autoimmunity. So they were already trying to get those people out of the study and they still ended up finding one in 300. Women they, so three. Hypothetically, if they added them, I wonder what the number would be. Has anyone came up um, with a... I think that's where we're at right now now is that we're trying to call for more research because that's the biggest problem. Like even all, almost, so many plastic surgeons are getting on board now um, with the concept that they make people feel sick, but everyone's in the back pocket is, well, we need research proving that it definitively makes them very sick before we can really say that we won't do them or something like that. Um, you know, because the FDA has said that they're safe. So that's where we're at right now. And the FDA did have um, a meeting, you know, a couple months ago where they were discussing the cancer that's linked to predominantly textured implants, but they did call for, I think they're black box labeling textured implants now. Um, mm -hmm. They've been definitively linked to a rare type of lymphoma that's only in this breast implant patient. It hasn't been seen in any other type of patient. Um, and that was based on a population study done in Finland in 2011. I, I want to say 2011. So we're a little behind. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm getting the memo on that. And, and textured implants are most commonly put in women who have mastectomies because they remove all the breast tissue and they think that the texture feels more natural. Um, so a lot of the plastic surgeons are like, we don't even use textured very often. Well, I have a handful of patients that are mastectomy patients who had textured implants for that very reason. 
Um, but how, and the FDA, but in their language, even in there, they, they wrote a letter, an open letter to doctors, and they said, be aware of this type of camp, this type of lymphoma in, in all breast implant patients. So that means if you are thinking about explanting and you are concerned about cancer, you need to test for that type of cancer before you let them cut you open because you don't want to spread it if you have it, right? Yeah, we'll talk more about explants and solutions. That's an important subject.